We have many stabilizers in the Floriani line. Uh, as I told you before in the introduction, we're going to be today breaking apart this uh, great family uh, of stabilizers into different subfamilies. We're going to do tearaways, cutaways, soluble specialty products. Um, but I want to begin with tearaways because tearaway products seem to be our go to product. Um, we're going to cover a lot of garments, but something most important, we're also going to be talking about different embroidery types. So you guys have a very hard job. You have um, a lot of things to think about of, of what's going to make your recipe successful. Um, and I'm just going to talk to you about all the different ingredients that's going to get you to that level of success that you want that's, that's going to make your embroidery perfect. Now, uh, we're going to be talking today a lot about wovens because that's our, our right now because wovens are what uh, tearaway is, is meant for. We don't use tearaway on knits and t-shirts and sweatshirts shirts those are unstable fabrics so those are for cutaways which we're going to get to in just a little bit but for our wovens and our stable fabrics um, that's where we're going to use our tearaways and what what are those fabrics that could be denim that could be linen it could be batiste it could be um, all types of woven fabrics uh, that we love for our quilting um, for um, just like the shirt I'm wearing a, a denim shirt uh, denim jeans things for our kids short season is coming up for us and so uh, you know doing embroidered shorts those types of things so um, let's get started with tearaways um, definitely there are different tearaways within our Floriani line but you experience a lot of different types of embroideries and I love to point this out because obviously this little um, open work flower design that you see on this little dress that's pretty uh, light it's open it's got a lot of um, somewhat like uh, hand stitches on it so that's one type of design then we may have something that's very intense this is quite large and it also has a lot of heavy embroidery on there and satin stitching so will one stabilizer work for all of these different types of embroideries and all these different types of fabrics no no sorry it won't so um, I want to share with you today all the different types of stabilizers that lend itself not only to the fabric but to the design also when you put a design in your machine uh, it tells you, obviously, how large it's going to be, but it also gives you a stitch count. How many stitches um, is going to be uh, done in the completion of this embroidery? So it may be 10,000, it may be 30,000. So we're going to be relating to that a lot today because that number also will help you decide how many layers of stabilizer that you might want to use. It's been my... Um, discovery that multiple layers of lighter stabilizer is better than a really big heavy stabilizer and that doesn't feel good does it so um, I prefer to use multiple layers to, to get the results that we want so today I'm going to give you those recipes to help you do the beautiful delicate embroidery but also the really heavy large embroidery and to get that product to lay or that embroidery to lay nicely in your um, embroidered garment so remember um, our steps for success especially in wovens I always pre-wash my woven fabric there is uh, no way that I would embroider on a cotton linen dress without first shrinking that base material before I lay the embroidery in there so that that's number one the next thing that I want to talk to you about is the shifting of the fabric have you ever experienced that even with a woven even like a denim shirt or a pinpoint cotton like I'm wearing um, I always use this sample. Some of you guys that have been to my seminars have, will probably recognize uh, this little uh, duck. He's on a lot of my embroidery. He's an older design, uh, not a lot of underlay. Um, and what that means, it doesn't lay a foundation before it puts the embroidery over it. So, but that's okay. We can still make the embroidery lay the way we want it. But what I wanted to show you um, on this fabric, uh, even though this is a woven fabric, what does it do? 
what does it do? It still stretches, doesn't it? It still gives and pushes. So when we're trying to handle our tearaway and the fabric and we're trying to get it in the hoop or maybe we're sticking it down, it, it can still stretch and move. So my um, solution to this is fusible. Um, this fusible adhesive that I developed uh, 15 years ago now, happy anniversary R&K and Floriani, we're 15 years old, I uh, can't believe it. So this adhesive that I developed is so wonderful for stopping that stretching and moving and pulling when you hoop, but also when you embroider. I like to tell everyone in my seminars, which usually gets a chuckle, this fabric is absolutely perfect. It's beautiful. And then here you come along trying to cram 20,000 stitches in an already perfect uh, foundation. So what we have to do is get that embroidery to hang on to the stabilizer behind it and not stress out the fabric that it's laying on. So how do we do that? First of all, I want to introduce you to our... Um, I love this. This is, this is a staple. This is your heat and stay tearaway. Uh, this is a fusible tearaway. Um, and I put thousands of fusible crystals on this product to bond with the fabric. But guess what? It's temporary. That is so important. This is not an inner lining. This is not um, something that's going to stay in there forever and ever. This is going to be a temporary hold that's going to fuse on to the back of your fabric so that when you press it on, look at that. That is not stretching. That's not going anywhere. And look, it's one layer. So that's going to be pretty easy to hoop, isn't it? So here's some tips for pressing your heat and stay tearaway onto the back. First of all, that word I just used, press. When you are, are ironing your stabilizer, your inner lining, your applique, whatever you're doing in all of our a great line of Floriani products. When I say iron or press, that's what I mean. I want you to press. I want you just to press the, the stabilizer on. So you want, you press down, you hold it for two or three seconds, you lift up and you press, okay? So it's kind of like doing the waltz. Press one, two, three, press one, two, three. Okay, so, so do that for me, none, none of this, all right? So that, that's rule number one. Rule number two is to use a pressing cloth. Your iron should always go to the fabric side, or if you're pressing from the stabilizer side, be sure and use your Floriani pressing cloth. That is so important. The Floriani pressing cloth is super dense, and it's made to create a protective barrier between that iron and your stabilizer. Or if you're pressing out your design, it creates a beautiful barrier between the iron and the embroidery. All right, so use your pressing cloth. So that's, that's rule number two, or press from the fabric side. Number three, low temperature on your iron. All of the Floriani stabilizers require a low temperature. Uh, I know that, that in my sewing room, I'm quick to get things pressed and ironed, and I have my iron set up at uh, you know, linen setting, cotton setting, but don't do that. I want you to be using um, wool or um, silk, between wool and silk on your iron to press in your Floriani uh, tearaways and cutaways. Very, very important. Last but not least, the size. When you cut your stabilizer uh, to fuse on to the back of your fabric, be sure that it is at least one inch bigger than the hoop that you are using or plan to use. Very, very important. If you just iron on a piece that's as big as the design, you have really um, you know, defeated the purpose of using it. So the fabric can still get in there and stretch and move. So be sure and um, iron on a piece that's at least one inch bigger than your hoop size, and that is gonna set you up for success, all right? So there, there are actually four um, rules to your pressing. All right, so set this aside. I do want to um, do an up close uh, with the camera to demonstrate and show what a remarkable difference the fusible tearaway makes on just a, a simple quilt cotton. Uh, this is just regular tearaway 
and I'm just going to hold that up and you can see the puckers and the pulls all the way around this little guy. Again, this is just regular tearaway uh, hooped with the fabric. Now, same, same fabric, same thread, same tension with the fusible. Wow, what a difference this makes. Okay, so look look at how it just smooths out. It pops off the fabric. And then when the embroidery is done, it just all tears away. It, it, just, it was temporary, but it temporarily held these fibers to keep that fabric from stretching so the embroidery could form the way it's supposed to form. Very, very important to use that fusible on your wovens. Uh, huge difference. Now, we have covered how you need to press in. We have covered how to pre-wash. We've covered um, how important the fusible is. But let, let's go back to what I was saying um, about your stitch count. Now let's kind of move into the design type that you're going to be laying into the fabric. So one layer of our heat and stay tearaway will support around a 10,000 stitch count design. How big should a 10,000 stitch count design be, real estate wise? Um, it should be about a four by four. That, that's on average. If you're trying to get 10,000 stitches into a two by two, that is probably a good sign that that design is going to need a little bit of extra help because it's probably going to be one of those that really pound maybe something like a, an animal that is layering the face for the, the nose and the eyes. Um, Think, think on your design, not just your fabric. So sometimes you're going to need a little bit of extra help. So I told you about our, our wonderful heat and stay tearaway, our fusible tearaway. This is uh, our number one product in the Floriani line. It's going to support about 10,000 stitches. But what if my design is bigger? What if my design is just poorly digitized or, or maybe it's just really dense in particular areas? Then I want you to do one more step. You have fused your stabilizer onto the back. You've got this gorgeous foundation. You've got it all ready. You've got it in the hoop. I'm going to use my hoop. Then what you're going to do is a, a method, a technique that we call floating uh, in Floriani. I don't want you to add bulk by adding a second layer of stabilizer in your frame. What I want you to do is float a second layer of tearaway, but not fusible. I want you to use the counterpart, the sister product, to the heat and stay tearaway that's called medium tearaway or tearaway medium. So I want you to use this product as your floater. It is it is fabulous. It is a wet laid non-woven, meaning that it is consistent. There are no thick and thin spots. Both of these products um, are built on the same foundation. The only difference is Heat and Stay has that fusible coating. Um, but this is going to give you that extra uh, support. It's going to take care of the design. You've already taken care of the fabric by fusing your stabilizer onto that first um, layer. Now what we're going to do is give the design what it needs. So let's, let's play pretend, as I say with my grandson, let's play pretend that our little duck here is about... 15,000 stitches. He's actually about 11, but we're, we're going to um, pretend that he's about 15,000. So we're going to um, hoop our fabric with our fusible stabilizer already adhered. Get the hoop onto your machine. Get everything centered. Get your topping in place because those of you that know me know that I use topping on everything I do and I'll cover that again in just a little bit. And then I'm going to take my medium tear away and I am simply going to slide that under the machine hoop right before I press that magic go button. All right, so again, we've got our fusible fused on, we've got it hooped, we've got everything centered, we've got our topping in place, and then our very last thing we do, when in doubt, we float. If you're just not sure that you, that fabric is, and stabilizer is gonna hold, take an extra piece of the tearaway medium and just float it underneath. It just gives the design the fiber that it needs 
to hold on to. Because here's what happens. If you don't give the embroidery design what it needs in the stabilizer, guess where it's going to take it from? The fabric. And that's when you get puckers and pulls and rumples in your design. So when you add those those extra fibers there, the design can the stitch can wrap around those fibers, relax and not stress out the fabric. Very very important. So when in doubt, float. Okay? So very very important. Now, I want to also talk about the type of design. Obviously, my little uh Susie Zoo character here, my little duck, that's a solid embroidery. It's got an outline. The tearaway will tear away very easily. Have you ever experienced when you go to tear your tearaway away that you distort your embroidery design? Ouch, I've done that before. I have ripped out stitches just when it's late at night when I'm sewing and I'm in a hurry trying to get something done for a baby shower the next day. We've all been there. I've been right, right there with you. So um, we developed a line of st or a, a type of stabilizer that's easier to tear away. My heat and stay tear away is is it is so good. It's for for dense embroidery with outlines. It's going to really support the majority of your designs. But sometimes we have a different type of design. And this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about uh, lettering. I'm talking about what I started out with, showing you this gorgeous little uh, linen dress. These are all delicate little stitches. If I were to tear away, I would have to be really careful with my tweezers to make sure. Uh, even this dense design, check this out. This is just, this is all satin stitching. Have you ever uh, torn tear away away from uh, a monogram and, and yikes, you accidentally, you know, made a bow out of your embroidery? That's so frustrating. I get it. Um, I'm going to sneak over here for a second and share something super special with you. This is a gorgeous christening gown that we did. Uh, just look at this intense embroidery, how gorgeous that is. That's a lot of picking out stabilizer, isn't it? But it's a dense embroidery, so... I need to, to figure out what is the best method for this, um, for this type of embroidery. I certainly wouldn't want to sit and pick out with tweezers all the stabilizer out from behind all of this gorgeous embroidery. And, but this is Batiste. Um, I can't use a water soluble because this is dense. I need stabilizer to stay within the embroidery. So here's your solution um, for these scenarios. It's a different type of tear away that's still going to give you support but it's going to be easier to remove. And yes, I make it in a fusible. You will quickly learn before today is over in all, the, all of this video that I am in love with fusible. It definitely makes you a successful embroiderer. Okay, so I'm going to reveal this product to you. This is Stitch and Wash. Stitch and Wash is... Um, it's, it's fabulous for all of those scenarios where you need support, but you need easy removal. Uh, I have a sample, and I love to show this. Um, you can see that this is all satin stitching here. I'm going to get the camera to zoom in on this. And watch what happens when you go to tear away. Yikes. I am pulling at this embroidery and it's literally pulling at my satin stitches. So that is not the result that I want. What I did in our stitch and wash product, I made a fusible coating that's temporary so it keeps this fabric from shifting and moving. But when I am ready to tear it away, all I do is lay a damp cloth over the back, let it sit for two or three seconds, and then pull it away. This product is half tear away half water soluble. Stitch and wash, the name says it all. So you're going to do your embroidery, you're going to do your gorgeous stitching, then when the stitching is finished, lay a damp cloth over and then tear it away and it's going to pull away beautifully. Um, any remnants that are left will continue to wash out uh, in the washing machine. Now again, remember I make it infusible and I make it non-fusible. So if you need a floater, like we demonstrated with the heat and stay tearaway, what are you gonna use? 
You're going to stay in that family. You're going to use the regular stitch and wash, the non-fusible, as your floater so that both will be easy to remove. Very, very important. And you saw all of the gorgeous little hem stitches and that type uh, work, the built-in machine stitches, not just embroidery. Stitch and wash is really good for that as well. Heirloom sewers, uh, listen up. If you're doing hem stitching or, or whatever type of heavy needlework or just even applique, this is a really good stabilizer to use um, to support your built-in machine stitches as well because it's so easy to remove. Uh, this is obviously very open. So all, again, all I did was lay a damp cloth on the back and then let it sit for two or three seconds and then pull it away uh, and, it, and it just comes right away. Very, very nice. Now, one boo-boo alert. If you re remember, I said to always use a low temperature iron uh, on, when you're pressing in these wonderful, fabulous uh, fusibles. But if you had your iron too hot, if you had it set and you go, oops, you know, I really ironed that in there uh, and you're having some trouble separating that, all you do is just reheat it. When you reheat it, you reactivate that fusible and then it will pull away very, very easily. So definitely use your fusibles to get that fabric in control and you are gonna be a successful embroiderer on your wovens because that's where we use tearaway. Mm -hmm.